can change yourself with your mind. You can change your facial structures with your mind. If you feel like the what you have are not things that you want, if you feel like the body that you have is too fat, if you feel like your face is a certain way that you don't want, there are ways you can use your mind to change mm. your own physical appearance. Mm. So you don't need to go bleach your skin. And when it comes to bleaching the skin, it is purely out of ignorance. There is nobody who will ever bleach their skin after they know the use of melanin. All of us, we have obstacles. And most of the time, it is the people around us, your lovers, and the ones who, they keep you from posting. Your father, they are the ones who keep you from going after your dreams. It's never the people outside of you, because the people outside of you are you, Ubuntu. The people outside of you who don't know you, those people will react to you the same way you react to yourself always. They will only copy what you do to yourself. But people who know you, those are the ones who have the powers to divert you from you following your dreams. So always know, bondage comes through doubt, disbelief, and fear. Anybody that is making you doubt yourself is demonic to you and just your proximity. Once you notice that somebody, all they want to do is, is instill doubt in you, adjust your proximity move away from them and plan when they all they do is making you disbelieve yourself like you say oh i don't feel like doing it and then they tell you why you know they try scrutinizing you or when you say i just feel they tell you no you are being delusional they gaslight you out of what you see out of what you're feeling they tell you what you see you did not see they tell you what you feel you are not feeling demonic it doesn't matter if it is your grandmother. It doesn't matter. These entities can be anybody. Those are demonic. And that is what demons are. You know, people think demons are people wearing black or, or spirits or whatever. Demonic people are people who are making you doubt yourself, making you not believe your intuition, and making you fear your soul path. Those are the only demonic people in your life. And once you transcend those in your personal life, then you're free. Heaven and hell are just frequency levels, mm. vibration levels. Because one thing about nature is build yourself. Nature will always tell you build yourself and then after you've built yourself, get out and find like-minded individuals and build each other. Contribute, help each other, keep your community rich. Okay? You keep your community rich. You don't contribute money to go keep other people rich and as long as africans are still doing that of which they're still doing it every sunday even today i'm sure there are people who went to church and contributed money which they don't know where it's going the body can do so much and this is why i'm starting to teach my own audience the prayers of worshiping the vessels because these are some of the ways you can activate your own vessel and we will get there it might not make sense right now but it will make sense in, when we get there you know, there are certain things that don't make sense mm -hmm. right now because we've lived in a time where people have been in slavery so much that certain things have been forgotten so much that people don't even believe they're possible. But they are possible. The world is open for everybody to exist in their own true form. And your true form is something that you know within you. Nobody else has access to it but you. Only you know you. Only you know your potential only you know your capability so if anybody comes into your life trying to make you think that they know you better than you that is a demonic entity and just your proximity mm -hmm. i worship my own god and then i because i am able to see my own god and believe in my own god and know my own god then i am able automatically to also see the gods in others and believe in the gods in others and worship the gods in others as well but i am not allowed to worship the gods outside of me before i see the one within me mm -hmm. everybody has access to god then you will know that even low vibrational energies still have access to god and things like pity will never exist in your subconscious because pity is a low vibrational energy Pity is a low vibrational energy because for you to get to a point where you are vibrating with pity, then you are somebody who you think you are you have an upper hand. <laughs> and nobody has an upper hand. Everybody is moving in their own lane. Everybody. Hi, Ada.
Hi, sweetie. I was like, she invited me. I was freaking out. Wow. And then I'm sitting here and I'm like, oh, wow. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is like a, a dream come true. I'm telling you. That is what has happened and I've seen is you and I've just been like, oh, welcome. <laughs> I am home, people. I am home. I am between my people now. Oh, my God. Thank I you. I would like to tell you I love your content. I have been seeing you. Michael Jackson, the same feeling I have right now. Thank you. Oh ah, I have been following. I have been following you since three years ago, and I'm telling you. So you can see, hey guys, I journal. Let me find. I put in a journal. People to meet. You are in that list. Let me show you. I have the proofs, guys. Manifestation words. Let me show you, please. No, no, no. People to meet. What is my list? I have to show. So people, there you go. Here it is. For those that don't believe in in these things, let me show you. Village people. Now, when I was born, like my mom, my mom was fine until she got pregnant with me. This is what she told me that she her life was okay until she got pregnant with me. And then after getting pregnant with me, things changed in a way that she's never seen before. Like her life became so difficult to the point she she by the time I was born, she decided to name me Tabu. You know, Tabu is a Kiswahili for problems, trouble. You you comprehend? Yes. <laughs> so she named me Tabu, and then my the village people from the village. She she said after giving birth to me, I was the sweetest child. I was full of joy. I was the opposite of what she had experienced as a, a when she was pregnant with me. And so people from around, from my behavior, people started calling me sweetie, 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 like cute or something, you know. So this name sweetie stuck. So much that this other name, Vivian Tabu, was something that I was only using in school. Okay. Mm. So one thing, uh, me, I was different from 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 pregnancy. Like first of all, when I came into this particular dimension, you see the umbilic my umbilical cord, the cord that connected me to the placenta of my mother. First of all. It 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 sw it got swollen so much. Like throughout my childhood, my umbilical cord was swollen. It called it's called pent. It was so swollen, like so much that and us in our tradition we believe that a child, children who have the umbilical cord that is swollen, are children who they, there was a push and pull between them wanting to come into this particular dimension or not. Okay, and then when I was when I was young, I was like. I was different, okay, I was normal, yes, but my mouth, like the way I used to speak, the things I used to talk about, most of the time, I would interrupt conversations of even grown-up people, and so, my life was always met with so much, you know, uh, how do you call it, resistance, okay, so, Mimi, my life has always been, like, I've always, I've always been this way, this way that I am on TikTok, I've always been this way, but then, growing up, I did not have anybody. I did not have friends. I had nobody to speak to. But at the back of my mind, I always knew that there is going to come a time where probably I will see something. Like, there's going to come a time where probably I'll see something to, to, to tell me that what I'm talking about is, is true and that there are people who get it. So, fast forward to 
high school i nobody understood me university nobody understood me and then after i cleared campus at the back of my mind i always knew i should keep talking i should keep talking so one day this app this app this app when it started it was called musically okay so it came one day it came to me when i was on facebook i used to talk on facebook the things i talk about now i used to talk about them on facebook so one day this app came to me it was called musically i thought it was cool because people were able to 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 sing you know with the song on the background there was no app that like that but it did not catch attention until they changed the name to TikTok. so the first time i saw tick tock do you know the first thing that came to my mind i did not know what was going on there i just saw the word TikTok, and the first thing that came to my mind was it's time the time has hit tick tock and i came to this app <laughs> and i came to this app and i created my first video my first video was not even about it was about fashion okay i posted a video that was just on my uh, randomly on my on my gallery and then I went to sleep. Waking up the next day, it had gotten a hundred K views. So I was like, what? It's truly time. <laughs> and that is that is how I, 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 I found myself here. So I started, I started, I just knew, like at the back, the, the same way I said the body knows. The body knows. I had so much, I had so much restrictions, I had so much things that were against me. But then I always knew I had to get myself here. Even going through university, I knew there was a time, something is coming somewhere. I knew something was coming. And then when COVID hit, I felt like, oh, probably maybe. But then when I saw TikTok, I saw the name TikTok. The first thing was time. Time, and you know me, I'm into astrology. Mm. I'm into time. So when I saw the app TikTok, and then I turned the logo, I turned the logo. I looked at Mimi. I paid attention to the TikTok Sana. I looked at the TikTok badge and the logo, and it was two, two turned two. upside down. Yes, and the, the two are three. Like they have three different colors. So to me, that was just like I, 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 I just started creating content now here. And as I created, I did not believe it because I started meeting people immediately. People that were like me. I'm, I'm, I'm not even, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't have words to express the impact you have personally in my life because a lot of time I have feel like I'm stupid. What I'm saying makes no sense. The way I'm doing things makes no sense. That I want to be in the trees, I want to walk barefoot. That's dumb. Nobody does that. But I still do. For some reason, I still do. And because I think representation is important. And, and, uh, oh, yeah. For us, many people. When we see someone like us doing something, we didn't have the boost, the energy to keep doing it. Because I know a lot of people were like, oh, I can't do this, I can't make this. But they show you doing it, having followers, uh, making millions, oh, yeah. PayPal, traveling, just by doing your creativity. They're like, oh, if my sister was able to do it, I can do it too. Yeah. And, and Africans here, please, can you talk to us Africans? Because mm. I think I in, in my understanding and overstanding, those who understand what I'm saying, mm. understand. In my overstanding, yeah. Africans, mm. we play so light, so safe. Yeah. We feel like we are not a shit, sorry for the expression, but we are. And the reason why is because you see on social media, the books in the story, they're not going to show you our creations. You tell me someone who built a pyramid is stupid, is dumb, what? 
What can you tell, please, to Africans to succeed, to be at peace? Talk to us, sis. Please talk to us. Talk to us. Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you one thing. Um, this thing, you know, most of the time. Let me just read something here. This thing is talking about uh, dreams are myths of individuals and then myths are dreams of the collective. There are a lot of myths. I'll repeat it. Dreams are myths of individuals. Your myths, your individual myths, they come to you in dream. And then myths, the things that we consider myths in our society are just dreams of the collective. Now, let me, let me, let me tell you one thing about us Africans and the reason why Everybody has, every other race requires us to be at the bottom of the bar barrel to provide space for them to excel, okay? Because the moment Africans get into the spotlight, then there is going to be no spotlight for other people. And the reason why I'm saying this is because just by you having melanin, my friend, just by you having melanin, People, it's time to study your pen or paper. We are in school now, please. I'm in school. Melanin, and I will tell you, I will tell you this, and I'm not meaning cap to people who are light skinned. On a light skinned people, and you know, white people, you have guys, you know, you have an advantage in the society, in our crooked society today, and everybody worships you. Now, when I start to worship the melanin, I hope you will not feel bad, but these are the truths that I will tell you about melanin. By the virtue of you having melanin, it means you, when you look at your skin and you see that it is dark, it means you have ancestors who have existed since the crack of dawn. This particular, as it, the more sun you absorb, it means the more ancient you are. You've been here since the crack of dawn. And just by having melanin, melanin makes you have a lot of capabilities. And I will tell you in layman's language, I will not even get into the nitty gritties of it. I will just give you superficially so that you see. There was a point in time before certain races, before we separated, the whole world was black. That is why in, I like to refer to religion because me, I read the Bible in the upside down. In the beginning, the entire world was dark. Before they said that there be light and there was light. By the world being dark, it means that the entire world was dark, including the skin color of everything that existed in this particular dimension. It was dark. And when you exist in the dark, it means there's no language. You know, there was a particular point in time when you trace back to time before human beings started communicating with sound. Black people existed. When human beings were communicating without speaking, black people existed. When human beings did not know how to speak, black people existed. And so that is already packaged. That is why I say your body, you don't know where your body has been. Your body has been into dimensions where communication was not through the word of mouth. Now, imagine that. By the fact that you have melanin, it means you have the capability, because you have it in you up to today. You have the capability of communicating without speaking. You have the capability of communicating telepathically without having to say things. And so you, meaning you have the capability of existing in the dark and seeing in the dark and communicating in the dark. You might not know, but certain people don't have that capability. And you can test it amongst yourself. There's something that me and my friends do that is called breathing underwater. And we believe that the more melanin you have, the more capability you have to breathe underwater. And breathing underwater is being able to stay silent until everything comes to light. Like, for example, when you're somebody who, you know, you exist in a society where saying certain things, like, for example, okay, let me just give an example that is practical. You have a group of friends, okay, probably somebody is acting in a way that you, you, like, it is contradictory to you. Because as within, so without. So probably you meet somebody and the way they are acting, it is off to you. It is off to you. Now, the capability of you being able to keep quiet and observe this person until it reaches a point where they prove you right. That is something 
that there are certain people cannot do. There, there are certain races that cannot do that. Be the capability of being able to breathe underwater, keep quiet, observe things until nature proves you right, until time becomes your lawyer. We usually say time is the lawyer. Time is the lawyer of your body. Every time you are following the rules and what your body is telling you to do, always know that time is the lawyer. Time will come and prove you right. And so the capability of being able to keep quiet and observe until time shows up as the lawyer, that, the capability of carrying out nonverbal communication, those kinds of things, the capability of seeing color, the capability of feeling taste. Black people can dive deep into things. They can feel taste more. They can see color more. You understand? They can feel more. And so people who can feel more, see more, observe more, hear more, your senses are over the roof as a black person. These are things that you need to be taught. That your senses are up the root, are, are up the roof. And so if there is somebody who needs to trust their body the most, it is you. Because what does that mean? It means that you have a close relationship with ancient organisms. Ancient organisms that existed in ancient times. Some of them have even become extinct in this particular dimension. But you still have their particular, you know, spirits within you. So as a black person, you should know that you are ancient and you can survive in any dimension. A black person can survive in any dimension. And this is why, this is what made the colonizer to put us as people who are slaves. Because they knew immunity. Because even by being black, there's something that is called hard Im immunity. Im black people are immune to so many things. And the reason why they are immune to those things, to especially modern things. Black people are immune to modern things because they have DNA that traces back to when... Certain people did not even exist. You comprehend? And this is a particular topic. When we dive deep into this particular topic, you realize that by the virtue of the you being black, just look at the trunk of trees. Do not trees, they have thick trunks. Some of them, they have narrow trunks. You understand? Mm -hmm. And the trunks, they determine the years that the, the, the tree has lived. So the thicker the trunk, the more years that particular tree has lived. Same to black people, the more dark you are, it shows the more your ancestors have lived. Meaning your ancestors, they trace back to the beginning of time. So that is the reason why you are dark. And so when you start to believe, when black people start to believe in their vessels, my friend, then we are awakening. We are awakening even the energies that are considered to be extinct. Because nothing goes extinct. Energy once created cannot be destroyed. It can only be distributed among the collective towards those who have the same affinity to it. But energy once created cannot be destroyed. So the moment as a black person you start trusting your body, and this is why I tell people, trust your body. Believe in what your body is guiding you to do. Believe in what your body is telling you to do for your highest good. When your body tells you don't go, listen to it. Do not go. And for you to believe in your body, first of all, I would like to tell you, make sure that your body is not compromised. Because also we have compromise due to the things you intake, due to the things, energy that you intake can compromise your body. So that your body, instead of listening to you, instead of guiding you, it starts to be compromised by other things. And right now, you know, consuming sugar, consuming fluoride, such, such kind of stuff, they limit your communication with your body. So listen to your body and stop moving towards eating things that are not local to you. You know, in Africa, people glamorize eating foods that are, you know, foreign, pizza. You know, people want to eat pizza. Mm -hmm. People want to eat foods that are the white man is eating to seem cool. Stop it. Some of you, you don't even like pizza. Some of you, you don't even like this white mm -hmm. man's food. But you're just eating it to stay cool. To fit in. Now, start listening to your body and start making the things that your body is telling you to eat cool. Literally, if you like Mokimo, if you are a Bantu and you like Mokimo, eat Mokimo. Don't start saying that, oh, you know, Mokimo is, 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 is you know,
know, it's not cool. Me, I'm going to eat pizza. I'm going to eat burger. Start glamorizing the foods that your ancestors ate because when you eat the foods that they ate, you are dining with them. Meaning you are making friends with them and you are telling them that, you know, we have a communion. When you have communion with your ancestors, then they remind you, they activate you. They activate your body. So those are some of the things that you, you people need to know. As a black person, the only thing you need to do is worship your body. Worship your body and watch the world turn upside down. And another thing, the last thing that I will say, most of the time we are meant to believe by mainstream media, they make us believe that black people are violent. But that is not scientifically accurate. Because the more melanin you have, the more compassion you naturally have towards your environment because you're closest to nature. And so when you love yourself, the more you love yourself, the more you are going to naturally love the things around you and the more you hate yourself. That's why they make black people hate themselves. Because when you hate yourself, you as a black person, the moment you hate yourself, you become a menace to the nature, to nature around you. Because now you start to hate everything that is associated with but the moment you start to love yourself as a black person, the more melanin you have, the more human you are. And by that, I don't mean that other people are not inhuman. They are human, but, them, but being human is the ability to feel nature, connect to nature, love nature. That is what being human is. And the more melanin you have, the more capability you are natural. You will naturally love nature. You will natu black people are naturally peaceful people. Even the African continent is naturally a peaceful continent. And every time you see there is fracas everywhere, then they know there is a third party. Know there is a third party that is making us have fracas. Because as a black person, you are naturally peaceful. You are a naturally peaceful person. You are a naturally compassionate person. You, are a natural, you, are, you naturally feel for your environment. You naturally feel for your environment. And this is why the ritual that they did to us when we were children. Everywhere I grew up, Ada, let me tell you, when I was young, everywhere I was growing up, they were, we all watched Jesus being killed on the cross as children. All of us, it was like a, a, it was like a rite of passage. Same, same in Watching my country. Jesus be killed on the, and we cried, yeah. you know, and we would cry so much because and that was, that was a ritual that was being stuck into our mind. To make us, you know, start feeling empathy for towards a certain type of people. That is why you find a lot of black people, they feel they naturally feel empathy towards the white man. When you when the white man comes into the continent, they are treated like gods by black people. Mm -hmm. We know this, we see it around. Yep. You know, black people naturally feel like the white man is fragile. Yep. We naturally feel like we should save them, like we should help them. And it is a, it is a ritual that is embedded in our psyche. Mm -hmm. To see life like that, so that to us we see ourselves as people who are a threat to the white man. That's how the black kids they they be they, we, we feel like we are naturally a threat to the white man, and so we we want to treat them like they are fragile. But this is this is something that Christianity embedded in our psyche by that watching that Jesus, that Jesus, the, that Jesus thing that we were meant to watch of Jesus being butchered. Every child watched it because it was a ritual. It was a rite of passage for a black child to make, to, to make us be naturally empathetic and to make mm -hmm. us channel our energy naturally to the Western world instead of keeping it in Africa. And right now, even as we speak, children still want to go to Europe. Children are still studying to go to the American dream, even though it does not exist. Meaning our crowd as black people is being channeled towards the wrong direction intentionally. We all grow up wanting to move away from home to go to Europe. Until some of us, we get to Europe and we realize it is hogwash. Until we get there and we realize somebody is just playing with our minds. So we need to tell black people to love, to love them. You, you don't even need to go outside to love somebody else. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. Mm -hmm. When you love yourself as a black person, automatically you press the button of loving everybody around you. I swear, try it. You don't need to go loving anybody. Just love yourself and automatically you will have pressed the button of loving everyone around you. So, yes, I will mm -hmm. hand it back to you. <laughs>
Mm, 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 mm. Class was in time. I take notes. I hope you all do too because sometimes you hear something once, it doesn't resonate. Save your notes. We read it in 5, 10 years, 20 years. It will make sense. Yes. If it doesn't resonate now, yes. it's okay. It will make sense it later. Resonate in future. I agree. I have another, another question. If I ask, please, I'm in class. I'm trying to learn from my teacher. I want to learn from my inspiration. Can I keep asking questions, please? Yes. Okay. Yes. How do you, yes. do, let's say you have a goal, you have a dream. And as we know in African yes. community, our parents, even our siblings are not the most supportive. Me, I experienced that. When I started making videos, my own family made fun of me. My own family made fun of me. They told me, you're crazy. You're making videos. Oh my God, yes. you talk too much. Do something yes. else. Yes. But I was stubborn. I did not listen. And because I did not listen, I made it this far. What would you say to those that their parents are not supporting them? Their friends, their family are keeping them down. Don't do that. Don't dream too hard. You can't do it. You can't make it. What would you tell to those people that struggle with that? Now, let me tell you, I usually say everybody has an equation in this, partic in this particular universe. Never look at yourself as insignificant. Even you, never look at Bill Gates or people who have billions of money and think that you are insignificant. No. Each and every individual in this particular dimension has an equation, a specific equation they need to solve. And it doesn't matter where you are. You might be the poorest person in the world, but if you solve your question, you've solved it for the entire collective. Now, these equations that I'm talking about, these are the challenges are. And one thing that I will tell you is that you are family. Do you 
what you see out of what you're feeling. They tell you what you see you did not see. They tell you what you feel you are not feeling. Demonic. It doesn't matter if it is your grandmother. It doesn't matter. These entities can be anybody. Those are demonic. And that is what demons are. You know, people think demons are people wearing black or, or spirits or whatever. Demonic people are people who are making you doubt yourself, making you not believe your intuition, and making you fear your soul path. Those are the only demonic people in your life. And once you transcend those in your personal life, then you're free. Then you're free. And you will be free forever because the world is open for everybody to exist in their own true form. And your true form is something that you know within you. Nobody else has access to it but you. Only you know you. Only you know your potential. Only you know your capability. So if anybody comes into your life trying to make you think that they know you better than you, that is a demonic entity. Adjust your proximity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ooh. That is what I will tell my people. <laughs> That is, yes, it's be strong-headed. Be very strong-headed. I will, I will talk about these things in deep, in depth, because there are depths to them. But then for now, let's just take them as they can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's what it is. That's wow, what anybody wow, wow. in your life that makes you doubt, disbelief, and fear your soul path is demonic to you and just your proximity. And it's usually the people around you. That is the equation. Everybody has an equation. Those are usually the, the challenges are there, right, around you. We have a saying in my, in my nation, in my language, my natural and original language, which is Fang, mm -hmm. in Equatorial Guinea, it says, Awu, da so ya which means death is not far from home. Which means the person who's going to kill you or destroy you is not far from you. Your the person who's going to destroy you is not far from you. Because if somebody doesn't have access to you, they're gonna go reach somebody who doesn't have access to you to destroy you. Watch out for your circle, your friends, your family. Energy does not care if it's family, if it's boyfriend, if it's ex, if it's co-worker. And bad energy is bad energy. Negativity does not care if it's your mom. The person who destroy you is not far from you. That person watch you every day. That person is in your yes. circle every day. Yes. Yes. Because what does not, you know, in science, what does not, what is not, okay, mtu ameandika, kikulacho kinguoni mwako. What is, does not have access to your DNA? What does not have access to your aura? What does not have access to your energy field? Cannot, does not have power over you. Mm -hmm. Does not, mm -hmm. does not. And mm -hmm. this is why I will tell you the biggest, the biggest spell that we black people have. You see, for example, religion or Catholics, they fellowship every Sunday. They fellowship every once a week. They make sure they fellowship. Do you know why? Because you need to keep. They need to keep you in the bondage. When you stop going to church, they will no longer have access to you. By the moment you're going to church and you're going there and you're eating the body and you're drinking the blood of Christ, you are renewing the union. You are renewing the union. And this is the reason why Christians are highly compromised. Because now when you are a Christian, when you identify as a Christian, then you are identifying with the bigger spell that has been casted on the collective. So also know, also know yourself as an individual. And the, the, the entities that you're supporting, especially Christianity in Africa. Christianity should not be a thing in Africa. And I'm not telling people to not come together to worship. Come to once two or three, where two or three are gathered, my friend, where two or three are gathered. The spirit is there. The energy is there. Now ask yourself which energy is there when you're gathered, the three or two or, or, or two of you. A lot of times, Christianity, even the, the Vatican has come out and has apologized. That they had a hand in slavery and colonization. They've apologized that they had a hand. But there are black people who are still upholding the spell. They are still upholding it by drinking the body and eating the, the body of Christ every day in church. So such kind of bondages, when you are a spiritual person, I know a lot of spiritual people are not associated with church. So your attacks are limited. But as long as you're somebody who you're still associating yourself with bondages like Christianity, then know that you're somebody who is highly compromised because now you are part of the bigger spell that has been casted on the collective. And that is just, you know, I'm, I'm saying if you want to fellowship, you can fellowship with other people, but know, know what you're fellowshipping about.
out. No, who died for you to be able to fellowship at that particular point? No, whose body you are eating and whose blood you are drinking? Because at the end of the day, something like Catholic, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, a lot of Africans are not moving because of that, because of religion. Because that now, it's a net. It is a net that is carrying a lot. It has carried a lot of black people in it. Religion is a net that is carrying a lot of black people ignorantly who don't know what they are following. So as an individual, we are in the age where every person, you carry your own cross. You carry your own cross. And if you want your own life to improve as an individual, then you must be answerable as an individual. There's no group work. We are in the age where there is no group work. We meet, like right now, me and Ada, we, we've met, we love each other, right? And we are vibrating in the same level, right? It's amazing. But at the end of the day, I have my own things to answer to. And I have my own responsibility and my own dreams to chase. Yes. And we should always know that. That at the end of the day, each and every individual, you have your own equations to solve. It's like a math class. And every individual, you have your own equation that you're solving. Now, will you find the answer for the universe? Because when you find answers for the universe, the universe is happy. It is rewarding, it rewards you. But when you fail to find the answers, then you get stuck and you fall into delay. And you become, you start moving towards disease instead of ease. Okay? Yes. Mm. <laughs> we, we... Yeah, so that's, that's what it is. We need to, we need to be responsible as, as, as Africans. And one thing that, even as I talk about this Catholic thing, you know, when Romans came to Africa, they found us with our own religion, okay? When 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 the Roman Catholic Church it came to Africa with the, with, the, with, the, with their Catholicism and whatever, and I I tried explaining it, Kitambo. When they came to Africa, they found us with our own spirituality, which were polytheic. We were we are a polytheic continent. Everybody with their own gods. We have, you know, the Yoruba, their own, the Igbo, the Luo. Each and every individual have their had their own gods, but then they came with eating, you know, eating the body, where it comes from. Like literally, there were civilizations that were cannibals. Cannibal civilizations that, and this cannibalism developed out of hunger. Ja, cannibalism, people who lived in the snow, when the winter was coming, there was no food, and so people used to offer themselves to be eaten, okay? And so that, the eating of the body and the drinking of the blood, it's literally cannibalism that was transported to Africa. But now they are eating spiritual sweat of people because you see those one bob, those coins that we remove as offerings in church. In the past, those were the monies that were used to build the villages. Because each and every individual, they had their, once you, you, you have your own produce, you harvest, then you would take some to you eat and then the remaining ones that were excess you would take them to the kings or you would take them to the dero as luos we used to call it dero you take it to dero so that people bring from different the way you bring you take money to church and you remove all it people used to bring money and different things from different parts of the of the villages so that they build the villages with it nobody would go hungry but then when the white man came that money that was being collected Thank you so much, Diana. That money and those offerings that were being collected so that they can build the village started being collected to take to the Vatican. They started collecting it to take it to Europe. From Africa, imagine money that is coming from poor people that are being collected and taken to Europe. Taken to Europe to fund pedophiles, taken to Europe to fund people whose agenda you have no idea. So the money stopped circulating in the villages and started circulating and being carried to the Vatican. So people who are even donating those money, you don't see how it is helping you. And yet, Africans don't ask. You know, yes, we remove our money. Yes, we remove our money. The money that you remove, taxes are supposed to build the country. Tax, these are the things they call taxes. These things are supposed to build the villages. Like me right now, Ada, if me and you were to start a village, literally everybody would bring their excess so that we build each other, so that the leaders, we build each other. That was the way... Together, was, not separate. Yes, we build together so that we have our own roads. 
Mm -hmm. Come on, gardens, mm -hmm. better our life. Yes. Until that money, until that money, they started channeling it to Europe. And now when they are channeling it to the Vatican, Africans are still asking themselves, why are we poor? They are still asking themselves, why are African countries poor? You are poor because you're channeling your money. Look at where your energy is going, where energy goes, grows. You are tight. You are channeling it to, to build the Vatican. Your money, you are channeling it to go build Pope. I don't know which Pope. So people need to ask themselves that kind of question because for us to build villages, and right now the world is headed to a point where we need to do sit down and see where our monies are going as individuals. Because now we are a generation that we are tired of that particular thing that our ancestors were doing. Our ancestors were doing it because of language barrier. Language barrier. You know, language barrier has been... It was even the reason why most of our ancestors were colonized because they couldn't comprehend what the white man was saying. The white man is, was lying and saying that, oh, this is what we're going to do. And then that is not what they're going to do. So the contracts were full of treacheries. But right now we are the descendants. Now we have to churn, know where our money is going. Because one thing about nature is build yourself. Nature will always tell you, build yourself. And then after you've built yourself, get out and Find like-minded individuals and build each other. Contribute, help each other, keep your community rich. Okay? You keep your community rich. You don't contribute money to go keep other people rich. And as long as Africans are still doing that, of which they're still doing it every Sunday, even today, I'm sure there are people who went to church and contributed money, which they don't know where it's going. As long as we continue doing that, and as long as the majority of Africans continue doing that, then the repercussion will always show in the level of poverty and suffering that we experience as a collective. Yes. That is for my black people that I love so much. Thank you so much, people who are gifting us. We appreciate it. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. We talk about how family and friends can keep us away from our true greatness. However, I see people were like, yes, you're right. However, I, I believe it all start with yourself. Because a lot of people, their own minds are against them. Their own thoughts are against them. Their own behaviors are against them. Somebody knows that eating junk food make you unhealthy, but you still go and eat. So sometimes it's not your family stopping you. Most of the time it's yourself. Yeah. Your own thought, your own energy, your own actions. Because it's easy to blame other people. No, it's my parents. No, it's my friend. No religion. No, it's social media. No, it's the politicians. No, it's my government. What about you? Point the finger at you first and ask yeah. you, what are you yeah. doing? What are you bringing to yeah. the table in your own life? Yeah. Are you doing something yeah. good or something bad? Are you your own savior or your own destructor? Are you the one keeping you low? Are you the one keeping you high? Because most of the time, it's not yeah. other people. It's you. It's yourself. But since it's easy to blame other people, we're going to point the finger at other people because that's the easy thing to do. Yeah. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, you know, as within, so without. So most of the time when you are somebody who you doubt yourself so much and you do things to subject your own vessel, I call the body vessel. Every time you do things to subject your own vessel, and people usually know when they're subjecting their own vessels towards suffering, when they're subjecting their own vessels towards things that are detrimental to you, your vessel always tells you, even when you're somebody who you're, you're unhealthy, your vessel will start screaming pain. Like, people who are working against themselves, they, so, they are in pain. People who hate themselves, they are in pain. People who, you know, they don't love themselves, they're not doing anything to help themselves. You're in pain every day. So just changing that and just deciding that, oh, and usually it's so easy to move away from addiction because some people would almost blame it on addiction. But at the end of the day, the moment you show up every day, try, like the days that you show up for yourself become more. You try every day that the day, so that the days you show up for yourself become more. If you're somebody who you don't show, show up for yourself at all, at least you try one day you show up for yourself. If you never, at least you try one day. You make it two days. You make it three days. There's power in repetition. By the time you're reaching six days, you're somebody, you're already registering it in your system. Like, we, we should embrace graduality, doing things for the betterment of ourselves, but we take one step at a time with it so that you change a habit. Because also changing habits is not a joke. You must be kind to yourself so that you, if you're somebody who...
pawn shop for yourself or if you're somebody who you are drowning in alcohol and you want to truly leave it because you know it is detrimental to you you know it is hurting your body you cannot just wake up one day and say you bulldoze your way out of it also you must learn to take one step at a time every day be kind to yourself and walk one day at a time and make sure that the days you're showing up for yourself are more than the days you're not showing up for yourself until you will reach a point where you show up for yourself every day and there's no day you're not showing up for yourself i also believe like being compassionate towards yourself is also something that is very essential as you move you just be truthful you don't live in denial and you take one day at a time because as you take one day at a time it will reach a year one day is what swell into a year day is what swell into years so make sure as your days swell into years then you're swelling with it towards the right direction mm. yes mm, yes mm, 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 mm. <laughs> i'm having fun so much i'm in heaven right now i'm in heaven hello i love it, I love it. <laughs> if sorry if if you can okay we have what can be your 10 commandments what are the ten commandments of sweet? What are the ten lessons, the ten tips, the ten ideas, the ten beliefs that Suri can create to share with the world? What are those? Now let me. Well, thank you so much for asking me, but can I just make them twelve? Yes. If the even thirty, world. Queen. If in thirty, <laughs> go for it. So these are the rules I believe. These are the commandments that I believe. Although I also believe in the laws of math. You know the Ten Commandments of Christians were taken from the laws for the forty-two laws of, of mad, yeah. The laws of balance, yeah. But then, uh, first of all, my rule number one is I am myself. I am myself, and I believe that that is enough. The fact that I am myself. Second one is I ensure that I have myself. What do I mean by this? I make sure that. Out of 100% of my energy, I always make sure that 100% of my energy are going towards me. So as I am myself, I also have myself fully. Because I can be myself, but my energies are being eaten by a lover somewhere or, you know, somebody that I'm being a slave to. So I just make sure I am myself, number one, and then I have myself, number two. Number three is I think myself. I have much I hear advice from outside. I hear people's perspectives. I hear everybody talking and even, you know, I hear my friends talking on social media. But I always make sure I think myself. At the end of the day, I collect data, but I make sure that I am that energy as it applies to me. It's driven by me. And then number, th number four for me is I feel myself. I always, I always want to have moments where I am not talking, especially as a melanated bee. I like to have moments where there is no other energy that is interacting with me. That's why I fast. That's why I fast. And my fasting is not just, you know, from words or from noise. I fast from noise and words. I go silence, silent as sometimes. I fast from food. Because fasting to me is keeping other energies away from me and just being present with my own energies only. So that is to me, I feel, I always make sure that I feel myself without any compromise from anybody. Just my energies only. And then I love myself. That is number five. <laughs> I always make sure that I love myself. And by me loving myself is by me respecting myself, me treating myself right. And me surrendering to the to the desires of myself and my body, regardless of what anybody else outside of me is saying. So that is me. I love myself. And then I analyze myself. I always want to make sure that I also take ideas from other people. I listen to other people and also know ways in which I'm wrong. I listen. I'm receptive to analyzing myself and my actions. And always making sure that I act for the good of all and with harm to none. The good of all, especially myself, and with harm to none, especially myself. And then after analyze, I balance myself. I always want to make sure that I'm not so hard on myself. I balance myself when there are times for me to feel sad, I allow myself to feel sad. 
When there are times for me when happiness comes, I allow myself to feel happiness because I know this too shall pass. When sadness comes, I don't attach myself to feelings. I don't attach myself to the happenings of the current moment. I allow myself to observe them and I balance myself in a way that I'm not attached so that I fall into depression. When something happens, I simply feel it and I balance myself to it and know that there's duality of life and we, 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 as long as we are here, there are times I will cry because I am water and there are times that I will laugh because I am air. So I allow myself to balance myself and then I desire myself. Now this speaks to my sexuality, you know? <laughs> This speaks to my sexuality. I allow myself to desire myself and be truthful to my desires. Literally, I will not pretend to like the things I don't like. And I will not pretend to not like the things that I like. So, at the end of the day, I make my desire of myself a priority. Also, at number nine, I see myself. I, before I am seen, before I want to be seen by anybody, I always make sure that I see who I am and I appreciate that particular thing. And by me seeing myself, it's just by me looking. I look at this vessel a lot. I call this a vessel, this body of mine. I call it a vessel. And most of the time, I take time with it just to see it. You know, there are people who don't even know the type of bath, bath marks they have in their body. I take time to see myself and adjust the things about myself that I don't like. I am a very big fan of, you know, I don't really work out like the, the heavy workouts, but I do like facial workouts. I do, you know, stretches just to make sure that my body is every day. By the way, I'm, I'm very religious when it comes to doing stretches and doing facial exercises just to make sure that I keep the like surgery. I call it, I do my own surgery. <laughs> If I see something about my body that I don't like, I talk to that part of my body. Literally, I'm, 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 I'm big on that, by the way. I talk to parts of my bodies and I tell them to morph and shape shift into parts that are how I want to see them. And it has been working out for me. I use myself. By using myself, I always make sure I put myself in places where I am able to receive as I give. And when I am working with people, I make sure that I show up for my part. When I am working with a contract, I make sure that I do my part to the fullest and I make sure that I do it with all my heart so that I get to receive that particular energy back, so that I get to receive that particular energy that I want back. So I allow myself to use myself for exchange. Aya. Another one is I know myself. I talk to my body and I know myself and I wa I know that nobody knows me better than I know myself because nobody has been with me more than I have been with myself. So I always put me knowing myself before anybody else. Nobody knows me better than I know myself. Nobody has the access to my ancestors better than I do myself. And then lastly, I believe myself. When my body... Mm. says no I swear I don't care whether it is a billion dollar bill when my body says no it is a no like literally I don't question when my body tells me that this energy when I enter into a room and my body starts feeling nervous or my body starts feeling uncomfortable I get out I communicate with my body so much and I believe myself so those are the affirmations they are 12 that I do every single day just to make sure that I'm grounded in who I am and that I'm worshipping the correct God mm. that is myself and my ancestors. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I saw your class is in session. Are you all in class today? I'm in class. I'm learning. <laughs> this is university. I'm going to have the degree in life, which is the best degree. <laughs> the do you have any, let's say, for example, uh, for us, we don't, in my opinion, talking for myself, mm -hmm. we always don't have access to you or to your information or to your time. So yeah. is there any mentors that you had or any people you have learned from that we can go and do our own research or maybe any book or maybe any scholar that have helped you in your journey? I was 
so sad. And the reason why I was so sad when I was graduating was I was scared that now how will I learn? <laughs> because I thought that, you know, once I'm outside the university, how will I learn? Like, will I even ever take a book and read or whatever? But then ever since I left, me, I learn from the encounters that I make. And literally, I call information to me. And this is what I believe. Honor, this can work for people. This can work for people too. As a feminine entity, I am a feminine entity. I see myself as an ovum. You see the ovum in the ovary? I usually see myself as an ovum. The ovum does not chase the sperm. It never does. The sperm is attracted to it. And most of the time, people think that the sperm is the one that finds its way to the ovum. But when you study science, you realize that the ovum is the one that releases chemical, chemical attractants that are able to go out and pick a sperm so that when the sperm comes, the ovum chooses the sperm. And so me personally, I believe in attracting. I attract money. I attract information. I attract books. I attract souls to myself. And so this body of mine, the body that I am in, is what usually leads me to the information. And the information are usually so random. There is no one person that I will say, this is the person that has helped me. Most of the time, even the people that I learn from, they wouldn't even believe I learned from them. Like you, I'm telling you right now, I've learned so much from you. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I do, because I believe we are all connected. I learn from everybody, and I never look down on anybody. Me, personally, there are accounts on this TikTok that I follow, that I communicate with, that I keep up with, that they have maybe 200 followers. You understand? And I, I listen to them because I believe and I respect the divine in them. Mm, mm, Same mm, to mm. Instagram. I usually know that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Always. Yes. And so that is the rule that I live by, and I'm very confident in it. I am very confident living like that. I don't have any piles of books about spirituality specifically, maybe history, of which I have kept them on my or oh, your Instagram profile. Yeah, I I saw yeah. them. I saw like five. And those books yeah. are for free, guys. It's PDF. Y'all can have those books. Yeah. If you have TikTok. There is, there is no excuse that, oh, I don't know. I can't learn. No, 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 no. The same way you go on TikTok to see people dancing, go on TikTok and learn. The information is out there. Look for it. Look for it. Yes, yes. Me personally, that's how I learn. I consider the world a big supermarket of information. And anytime I need the information, I just go to the shelf and pick. Mm, mm, <laughs> anytime mm, I need information, I just go to the shelf and pick. And download it because I believe that this vessel of mine is also a memory card that I'm, I will pass on. Yeah. I'm trying to download as much as possible. I'm, down, I'm trying to download as much as possible for my daughter so that when I give back to her, she will have as much as possible to also pick from there. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Have you achieved your goals or your dreams so far in life? Is there anything you wish when you were That's 10 years old? And you had made or you have acquired now? <laughs> right now, I, I would say yes. I have, I have desires of the things that I, I want to go. Like I, I haven't reached my full, if I would have reached my full potential, I would be dead by now. So I'm sure that by the time I'm dying is when I would have reached my full potential. But right now, I'm at a point where I am successfully and easily with no distractions, moving towards my dream. Like, I consider myself successful because I have everything I need to walk. I don't have, you know, cars or, or aeroplanes or whatever, like materialistic stuff that people need. But I have everything. I will stand confidently and say, at this particular point in time, I have everything I need that I dreamed of as a child to move towards the stages that I want to go to. There's nothing blocking the stages that I want to go to. It's just me. I, just me showing up every day. And one thing that I believe personally on my path is that life is like temple run. I only need to walk. As the sun continues to rise and set, I only need to make sure that I show up as the best version of myself and then everything else falls into place. So I'm at a point where I am happy and content and satisfied with where I am. Mm. But it is not where a future version of me is. Mm. And I know that 100%. But currently, I love where I am right now. And I am grateful for it. And I am appreciative of the process.
process. I trust my process. Yes. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm, I'm a believer of giving people their flowers before they even die or anything. I'm going to give you your flowers publicly. Yeah. And I know I'm speaking for thousands of people. You give us, you don't give us material things. You give us life. You give us joy. You give us information. You give us peace. You give us reasons to keep loving ourselves, to keep believing. You have changed generation because I know your videos are going to touch somebody else in 10 years, 40 years, 50 years. So you have led a legacy of love, a legacy of courage, a legacy of peace. And you have to know that every time you walk, you have us walking with you. You have built an empire. Thank you for all you do. My God. Thank you for all you do. I want you to know that the future is ours. The future is ours. Yes. <laughs> the future. Mm. I want you to believe that with so much conviction. Mm. The future is ours. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's ours. <laughs> wow. 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 wow! I love this. I love this. If you can go back 20 years, what would you tell yourself? Or 10 years ago? What would you tell 10 years old sweetie? What would you tell her? Or 20 years old sweetie? What would you tell her? Be more confident, girl. Be more confident. Like I would tell her, lift your head up. Lift your head up. Because I remember my younger self was always like this. Oh. Like, it was so hard and she was so scared if I was to go back I would just tell her more courage, more confidence girl, more confidence, more courage believe in yourself more yeah that's what I would mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> hit harder I would tell my younger self hit harder oh uh, well, <laughs> well my younger self too, hit sweetie if you see her go on a walk with her Go sit down and, and look at the tree with her. Keep her close to you. Keep her close to you. Keep her really close. Listen to her. Talk to her. Cry with her. Dance with her. Hanging out with her. Don't, don't even try to lose her. Because if you lose sweetie, you're not going to find another one like her in a billion years. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. I appreciate it. I appreciate you so much. Uh, guys, everybody think I'm joking. This is, let me show you all again. I wrote this. Okay. Let me see. If so, people that just joined the live, I want you all to see why I might seem like excited or something. I want you all to see this. How do I turn my camera? Oh, wow. No, me, no, no. You had to use TikTok. Guys, sorry. Yo, I don't know how to turn my camera. Please. Mm -mm. What, how do I, I don't know, but okay. You all see the date? Meeting me. See the date. See, see the, the date. Oh, thank you, this is. I don't know if you can see the. Can you see the date or no? No. Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna speak. I wrote this on March 28, 2023. I have a list of people I want to meet, and sweetie, this amazing She's goddess so is number one. And today, June fourth, it came true. <laughs> Guys, um, this is, I wrote it. This is it. I wrote it. I'm sure I wrote it and it's happening to anybody out there. I usually tell people to manifest. Manifest. Write it down. Yeah. Use your imagination. And once, yeah. and believe, don't hope it's going to happen. No, and believe it will happen. I didn't say, I hope I can meet sweetie. I say, I know I will meet her. I believe I will yeah. meet her. Command, demand, don't hope for things to happen. Make things happen. And after almost, what, three months, here I am doing. This is a dream come true. Thank you so much. I love it. I, I love it. Wow. I love it. Yeah, write it all down. People are asking where you're from. She's from Equatorial Guinea. Guinea, yes. Yeah. Central Africa. Amazing, beautiful, powerful Central, country. Don't play. Central Africa. But one day, this talk is going to be in person. I know it and I believe it, sweetie. It will. Yep. Me personally, I already knew. I already honor. There are people I already know. Like, literally, I 
usually and th this makes me it usually makes me feel so bored in life because usually when i see people a lot of times the people that are i will have entangled like the people are entangled with i know i i see them and i know and sometimes these people don't know but then me i see it and i just know that this is part of my future ah this one is going to be part of my future and i usually just leave it for the world to unfold and let it happen that is also another thing called breathing underwater the ability to just know and know that it will happen and then you wait for the right time to come that is the ability of breathing underwater i always know and you my dear we are building a village we are um, we are starting a new civilization we are the ancestors of the future mm. I want to talk about the, I think this self hate that us uh, black people yes. have. For example, I have experienced, I have seen black people who are ashamed of being black. They are ashamed yes. of their head. Yes. They are ashamed yes. of their body. So they're going to go yes. and, and bleach their skin. Where does that self hate yes. come from? Why do certain yes. African people think that their skin is yes. ugly? Their hair is ugly. Yeah. I, I'm going to see an African queen that cannot go outside with natural hair. Even my own hair. People have made fun of me for, for having my hair like this. They telling me, oh, go do your hair. What are you doing? It looks ugly. Like, it does not look ugly. My hair is beautiful every day. My hair is amazing every day. But no, they're going to wear a wing. They're going to put makeup because they think, they feel that. Even if they have a makeup or a wing on, they are not beautiful. What can you tell to our beautiful black queens and kings, our goddesses that think that their skin is ugly, that they think that their hair is ugly. Please talk to them. Talk to us. That is what I... It's to everybody having their own equation. Now, it is not easy to transcend the type of spells that we have against us as black people. And me personally, I will be honest. I will be honest that there was a point in time where I was even ashamed of my accent, okay? There was a point in time where I could not talk in front of people because one thing, I went to a university that had a lot of people who had white man, a black person with a white man's accent, you know? And for the longest time, that was considered, you know, the, the in thing. And every time you would speak, me personally, I speak like a nyloid. You know, I have a very, an accent of a nyloid and people would make fun of me for having that. And... I totally relate to people who, people make fun of you because you're too dark. People make fun of you because of the way your hair is. Now, those are the, those are the equations that you have as a specific individual to solve. And some people, they bend so much that they break. There are some people who the world has bent them so much that they break. And when you look at people doing this kind of things, around us then we sh need to know where it is coming from and literally i think all of us know where it is coming from because from being a child there's a way in which the europeans were portrayed to the african mind we all know they were portrayed to be smarter they were portrayed to be more civilized they were portrayed to be the in thing the modern thing and so if you were nothing like that then you did not fit in society if you are nothing like that then you there was a time even having a job as a black person with hair like this wasn't possible. Even our institutions in Kenya, there was a time you wouldn't be a news presenter with dreadlocks. You wouldn't get certain jobs if you had dreadlocks. And so all of us need to know that there are weapons fashioned against you. And this is the reason why it is always essential to say no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper because that statement right there, there are weapons that were fashioned against you before you were born. There are weapons that were fashioned against your ancestors before you were even conceived. And some of these weapons are publicly known, like the Eurocentric standards. If you don't have European features, then you're considered ugly. If you have a fat nose, then you're considered ugly. And they don't even look at the biological representation of your nose. 
born into doesn't like people like you. Even though that world belongs to you, even though that world is the world that your ancestors walked fast, there are people and there are entities. Hell is the best. Amongst your entire ancestry, your ancestors looked at all vessels that they could give you and they, you chose that one because you like it, because that is your representation of beauty. Your vessel is your representation of beauty. Your race is your representation of beauty. Your features are your representation of beauty. And so anything that makes you think otherwise is demonic to you. Anything that makes you think that the skin color that you chose is, dim is, is otherwise is not the best. Anything that makes you think that the tooth arrangement that you chose is not the best. Anything that makes you think that your face, your nose, the things about yourself that you cannot change are not the best is demonic to you. And so it is upon you to decide whether you are giving in to the demonic entities in your life or you will transcend them by changing your mind and changing your perspective and loving yourself. We all come here to love ourselves. You don't come here to love other people. You come here to love yourself first before you love anybody else. Mm. And so as a black person, no, know, know that, know that you will never be the best version of yourself until you turn and love and respect and mm. trust yourself. Mm. But the moment you're changing and you know these things, you can change yourself mentally. This is another topic that is re literally a topic that people will not comprehend right now, but in the near future, people will comprehend that surgery is something you don't need to do. You can change yourself with your mind. You can change your facial structures with your mind. If you feel like the what you have are not things that you want, if you feel like the body that you have is too fat, if you feel like your face is a certain way that you don't want, there are ways you can use your mind to change mm. your own physical appearance. Mm. So you don't need to go bleach your skin. And when it comes to bleaching the skin, it is purely out of ignorance. There is nobody who will ever bleach their skin after they know the use of melanin. Because you bleaching your skin is like you telling God that, ah, all these extra gifts that you gave me, I don't want them. Exactly. Take them away from me. And I want, I want to ask people, do, 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 extra gifts, take them, I don't want them. Yeah. It's like when you hate yourself, it's like you, you think that God was stupid when he made you the way you are. <laughs> God was yeah. not stupid when he gave you your head, your skin, your body. He was not. He was not. That is the reason you have that skin, you have that hair, you have that lip, you have that nose. Society will tell you. Because it was a time that, for example, in Africa, when I was, when I would grow, I was growing up, the movies... The cartoons, mm -hmm. the music. Yes. Who's the most beautiful? Yes. The white woman. Yes. They want to repre yes. represent yes. the black woman or the one who's ugly, the one who's violent, the one who's dirty, yes. the one who sells drugs, yes. the one who don't, doesn't have a job. Yes. And when you yes. grow up seeing your race yes. represented that way, you're going to believe that, oh, maybe yes, I'm ugly. Maybe yes, I'm, I'm not this, I'm not that. The one who has the, the most yes. money is the white person. The most successful, the white person. Yes. The best way of eating, yes. the white person way. The best way of dressing, the, the white person that's way. The and that's portrayed consistently in the media, in the books, in the music. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take time to analyze those things, you are going to grow up believing those things. Mm -hmm. Not everything you see in the movies is true. It's a program. That's yes. because every time you watch television, yes. watching somebody else's vision. Every time you watch the yes. news, the movie, the music, you are consuming the information yes. somebody else wants you to have. Take yes. time to analyze and question what I'm listening to. Helpful? What I'm consuming, is yes. this positive to me? Yes. Just ask yourself those questions to you. Yes. And it's not even, we can't even go far. When TikTok started, let me tell you, when I got first got me, I got on TikTok, I think, uh, three years after it was musically. And then when it started being TikTok, I got in immediately. Let me tell you, it was white people over here. Like, there were no black people in, on TikTok. Even when you are a black creator, you would second guess yourself because black people were not getting views. Black people were not getting views. It was rare for black people to get views on this platform. And usually, the TikTok, the way TikTok app started should tell us just how the world was before we decided that we are going to make it the way we want. Because right now, black people are everywhere on TikTok.
TikTok creating trends and doing all sorts of things. But when TikTok started, and somebody who started TikTok with them in the beginning, you can attest to this. It was only white people. It was always Europeans were the ones who were getting millions of views. There were no black people to get any views on this app. In fact, the app in itself was racist. You know, it would you would be come here and even the, the, the filters were not black. It has taken work. Literally, it has taken work from black creators on TikTok to push TikTok to a point where it is acknowledging black people. Every other time, we always have to create spaces for ourselves everywhere in the world. Like, we get there and there's no seat for you. You have to literally create your own seat. Build your own. And we've created our own seat so much that we've reached a point where now it's black people. It's black people everywhere on TikTok. But in the beginning, it was not. Meaning, default setting on our society, the default setting of our society is favoring the white person literally automatic and as a black person you need to know that you need to know that even business currently i'm a business person and let me tell you doing business in africa is next to impossible right now business in africa is the same way tiktok was when we started it white people are the ones who are getting the cream de la cream and the system is set up that way the system is set up in a way that even a black person, when you have a company here and you want to export goods, it makes it impossible for you to export. The taxes that they put, it makes it impossible for a black person to thrive in the business industry. And a lot of black people are not talking about it because people are embarrassed. Nobody wants to look like they're struggling. But these are the, some, some of the things that we need to come forward and say that, by the way, so that when you watch other black people suffering, you know that what they are dealing with because this is what everybody is dealing with it is not easy for a black person to export things out of africa and not just exporting even to european you might wonder that it would be difficult for us to export to european countries no even me exporting from kenya to tanzania here me exporting from kenya to south africa here is worse and more difficult than me exporting from kenya to the uk the sanctions are crazy. It makes it impossible. And this is why we say, when you are a black person that doesn't move, you don't notice the chains. Some of us, we are very bitter when it comes to colonial representation because we have moved and we have seen the chains. The chains are crazy. If you're a black person and you've never done business and you're saying that, oh, I will have a business that will boom across the world. No, that currently it is impossible to move as a black person efficiently. There are rules that have been put in place to specifically make sure we don't move. And that is why we are fighting so much for African borders to be open because we need to move. One thing, black people are not moving. We've been, we have chains. We still have those chains. Our ancestral chains are still with us up to today doing business try doing business in africa try making things so that you export them the price that you will use to deliver something to the uk will be more than what you're selling you, you comprehend what i'm saying yes the price for delivery is more than what you're selling but then when you're buying something from uk to kenya the price is less the delivery fee is less now it doesn't make sense and you don't have anybody to ask. You don't know who to ask because that is where the rule. That is how the rules are. And now this is the reason why we are here. It is not easy. Yeah, you end up making losses. You end up like, for example, me. I make clothes. If I am to make one million exporting my clothes, it would mean for me to make one million, I will have made the UK government ten million. Just for me to make my one million. Yes. And these are some of the things that we are fighting against. But people who are not moving, they don't know we have chains. People who are not traveling, they don't know we have chains. It is always affecting people who are trying to move. And it makes you frustrated. Sometimes you even fall into depression because now you reach a point where you don't have anybody to ask. Who will you ask? Mm -hmm. Who will you turn to? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Because that is how the system is set up. So now we realize that it's like the way we started TikTok. And I came here i found there were so many white people everywhere black 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 videos are not pushed to the for you page we had to stay and keep on fighting and keep on speaking and keep on making noise 
for them to hear then literally they hear so as long as you keep on speaking up for yourself and making noise and saying the truth don't keep quiet about these things mm -hmm. some people should stop keeping quiet about yep. injustices yep when you notice an injustice speak up speak up speak up because that is how the system now opens up to us and that is the only way we have you cannot bulldoze your way through it you have to walk and you have to where once you notice they are chains then you have to speak up and keep speaking up so that black it is black people that save black people if you think a white man is coming to save you you are wrong you are, are think twice facing, when there are issues facing black people a white man doesn't give a fuck because those issues don't affect them so yep. it is only your own fellow black people when i make noise Somebody else who is going through the same thing makes noise. Somebody else who is going through the same thing makes noise. And then our noises, they come together and that is how we bring change. That is mm. what I've seen. Mm. But when you cry to, to somebody else, a white man, to help you change the system, they will never change it. It has no. been like that for thousands of years. Tears don't solve it nothing. Is Tears solve yes. nothing. You can cry all you want. You can cry every day. But if you don't take action, nothing will change. You can even talk. It, oh, yes. no. I'm big on meditation and stuff. You can meditate all you want, but if your actions are not aligned, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You can meditate, you can pray, you can manifest, you can talk all you want, but if your actions are not aligned, it's not going to happen. People yeah. talk all they want, but they, they can't act. Oh, I have this dream, I have this goal, I have this idea, but what are you doing? Just talking about it? No. Actions. Exactly. Actions. Actions. Yes. For example, me, I'm going to use myself. Mm -hmm. I manifested I'm, I'm, I'm going to meet you one day. I did not go and sit and see it happening. I created yeah. content. I stayed true to myself consistently. But because of my yeah. actions were aligned with my manifestation, it happened. A lot of people here, they have goals. They have dreams, ideas, business. But they do nothing. All they do is talk. Oh, my business. Oh, my project. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. You have to push yourself. You have to... That is why I say, the moment you solve a problem to yourself, you've solved it for the collective and you have no idea the reward. The reward that comes with you solving a problem for yourself. We all come here to solve all these problems. We don't just complain. You know, you find ways to oh, wow. find like-minded individuals so that you make noise together and as we continue to make noise together this is how we will even change our governments this is how literally trust me noise makes a difference noise makes a, talking without keeping quiet makes a difference you don't know who is listening you don't mm. know who you are reaching and mm. that is the only way we solve problems because when you don't talk about it when you want to pretend like you, you are okay just so people don't see that you're struggling. The struggle is real, especially in the African community. The struggle even of our governments is real. If our governments are struggling, what, who are you? Our governments are struggling with sanctions. Our governments are struggling with, you know, lack of movement, blockages everywhere. So it means that even us, that is what we are, that is our reality. Mm -hmm. And then we have to make sure that we move and we solve them on our individual level so that at least the collective level is moving. And it works. It works. It does. Showing up every day, it works. It works. It works. And also, Consistency is key. You mentioned uh, the yeah. change. In, in, my, in my opinion, in my view, slavery mm -hmm. never finished. It only moved yeah. to now mentally. Because nowadays, yeah. the change we have as people are not physical are mental, emotional, and psychological. Yes. Somebody will sit in their house. They have not changed, but they are not moving. They are not making progress. Then who's, who's keeping you Who's keeping you down? Yourself. Because you have yeah. changed mentally, psychologically. You don't, you, don't, you don't even allow yourself to dream big. Oh, no. Somebody, who's going to stop you? Because slavery nowadays is mental, emotional, psychological. You hating your own self. Yeah. That's psychological. You hating your continent. Yes. That's psychological. You thinking you cannot succeed. That's psychological. Mm -hmm. Nobody's keeping you yeah. in, in, the, in, in the ground. It's yourself. Slavery now is mental. People's ideas, people's mind. You will be surprised. 
So I'm like, oh no, I don't love myself. Why don't you love yourself? It's mental. You don't have no change on your body. You are not in prison, but you act as if you were a prisoner. Yeah. Somebody, somebody is saying slavery never ended. It just got creative. Yeah. Yep. It is, it is so psychological that and emotional and mental. Person, yep. Yeah. It and I like the fact that it is now individual job because as an individual, you have to do the work. Yep. Yourself. You have to make sure that you show up. Build your own. Don't beg for nobody for nothing. And Build your own. Up, and showing up requires you to push yourself. It's not easy. It's it's even to me. Look, you know, people think that me making videos is something that I, I just wake up and it's done. These are things that I have to be consistent about and I have to constantly know that actually the little that I'm doing, the little drop that I'm pouring into the ocean is making a difference. It is. It is. You have to believe that for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to believe in them. Nobody will believe in you for you. <laughs> That's on you to do. Is that yeah. people say, oh, I want to change the world. No, 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 no. Start with yourself. The world is huge. Change the world yourself. is big. Start with yourself. Yeah. And I made a video saying that people should be more selfish. People like what? selfish why are you saying that i was like yeah i stand on what i said because if somebody is selfish with the time that person will respect your time yeah. if somebody is selfish with mm -hmm. the love that person will respect your love mm -hmm. people who are not yeah. selfish i cannot be your friend i'm sorry you have to think for yourself first you have to empower yourself first you have to love yourself first you have to make yourself a billionaire first you have to make yourself rich first because let's say my family is poor and i'm poor too how do I make them rich if I'm poor? No. I got to be the difference. If you are dumb and I'm dumb, who's going to make who intelligent? It all starts with you. Educate yourself first. Make yourself happy first. Believe in yourself first. Build yourself first. Make yourself rich first. Because if you are poor, you cannot make somebody else rich. If you are dumb, you cannot make somebody else smart. If you are weak, you cannot make somebody else strong. It all start with you first and foremost. Exactly. And you know, we are headed to a place where selfish people are going to be friends. And people, people who are codependent, most of the time, selfishness exists in the vocabulary of people who are codependent. People who, they don't want you to love yourself, they want you to love them. They don't want you to prioritize yourself, they want you to prioritize them. So anyone that calls you selfish, that's how you know they are codependent. People tell on themselves. Demonic entities will always tell on themselves. If somebody calls you selfish, automatically, don't even listen to the selfish. Just know that they are te telling you that I am codependent. I want you, I want to benefit off of you. I am parasitic. Mm. I want us to have a parasitic type of relationship. Mm. But anybody who doesn't want to have a parasitic type of relationship, anybody that wants to have a symbiotic type of relationship, that person will never call you selfish because I want to have something from you because I know some, I, I have something to offer. Mm. If I have something to offer you, I want you to be in a position where you have something to offer me as well. And for you to be able to be in a position where you have something to offer me, then you have to be somebody that you have. Mm -hmm. People who don't have. How can they give? How can you give something you don't have? Yes. How can you give something you don't have? How? Exactly. You can't How? give someone an empty cup. So selfishness is something that being self-centered and being selfish, those are the rules to not sinning. But now religion will tell you because religion breeds energy vampires. Religion breeds energy vampires. Religion only breeds people who are there to eat from you parasites who are there to eat from you mm -hmm. they are the ones who they don't like being self-centered you know when you're self-centered you are centered in yourself mm -hmm. meaning any decision you make is for your own highest good mm -hmm. even when it is fast it is for your own highest good fast before it benefits anybody around you and that should always be the case mm -hmm. any decision you make should always be for your own fast highest good before it benefits anybody around you any decision that you're making is to your own detriment nothing that is truly meant for you will require you to betray yourself, yourself. Mm -hmm. nothing nothing that is truly
truly meant for you will require you to betray yourself to achieve it. Mm -hmm. So you should always know that the things that are truly meant for you will actually require you to love yourself mm -hmm. to achieve it. Yes. Yes. Andrea, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, so those are the things that people should know. The moment somebody calls you selfish, know that they are codependent. They have nothing <laughs> to offer. They are useless to themselves. That's why they want you to be useless to yourself too. Mm -hmm. And don't fall for it. Don't. Don't fall for it. <laughs> I know I'm taking out of the time. This this is my last question. I'm gonna let you. I know I'm being annoying. People are tired of me. No, no, no. This is I don't want to take no, nobody's time. No, don't even don't, oh, don't. I don't. take those back. Take those back. I'm okay. enjoying. Okay. Oh god, I'm enjoying. Okay. Can we talk about the God in you and the God in me? Because I don't comprehend that people feel comfortable telling themselves, Oh, I'm a bad bitch. Oh, I'm stupid. Mm. Oh, I'm this. But when you say I'm God, mm -hmm. what? What do you mean you God? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you talking bad. <laughs> like people are so comfortable giving themselves negative attitude. But if you give us something positive, oh, something is wrong with you. What do you what, what do you think about that? That the God is in you and God is in me. The power of Godness in you, that you are God and that I'm God. What are your thoughts on that? One thing I believe, let me tell you, one thing I believe, this concept is very broad. But let me narrow it down. Now, one thing I believe is that, mm -hmm. you know, we are all, we share God. And how we know that is through breathing in and out. If you stop breathing in and out right now, what will happen? Dead. You'll die. Bye. Exactly. That is what we share. We share God by the virtue of us being able to breathe in and out. Meaning, there is God. God is the cold reservoir. God is the entire universe. But then me and you, we are fragments of God. Mm. Look at the gold reservoir. When I go to Congo right now at a gold reservoir and I take a piece of gold and I take it to the UK, will that piece of gold still resemble the gold reservoir in Congo? It will. Yes. It will look exactly like that. Even though it is in the UK, it will still resemble the gold reservoir in Congo. Meaning we are all the universe. But then the universe is experiencing itself in tiny, tiny fragments. That is you and me. Mm -hmm. God is in you. God is in me. Now what we've come here to do is, I have come here to worship the God, my God, which is my body. The, the fragment is the body. Your body and my body, they share the same things. Your body is built up with the same things my body are built up with. When we talk about material, okay, on the surface. And so... The fact that your body and my body share everything. You have God in you and I have God in me. Now, my function is I worship my God. You worship your God. Okay? When we meet, gods recognize each other. Gods will always recognize each other. It doesn't matter whether the other God is a street kid and the other God is a billionaire's kid. Gods recognize each other. It doesn't matter which timeline. It doesn't matter which dimension. And so my job is to worship the God within me before I worship the gods outside of me. Mm. Okay? Mm. I first of all worship the God within me and know the God within me before I set foot outside of myself to recognize and worship the gods outside of me because there are gods outside of me. But I cannot see them unless I see the God within me. So my job is to first of all see and worship and acknowledge and believe the God within me and then I come out and interact with the gods outside of me because mm. they are mm. and they are. Mm. So that is one thing, that is what I believe in. That is what I believe in. And that is all I am here to do. I worship my own God. And then I, because I am able to see my own God and believe in my own God and know my own God, then I am able automatically to also see the gods in others and believe in the gods in others and worship the gods in others as well. But I am not allowed to worship the gods outside of me before I see the one within me. Mm -hmm. I am, that is not allowed. That is not right. That is sin. The moment you find yourself worshipping other gods before you acknowledge your own God, 
before you know your own God, before you bless your own God, then you are sinning because now you're worshiping an idol. Mm -hmm. There's no God outside of you before you see the one within you. But then the moment you see the one within you, then the ones outside of you start to appear. And that is the truth that I believe in. That, that is what I live by. That is what I live by. Yes. Does that mean that we can do accomplish the things that our creator did since we are a reflection of that energy which yes. means we can heal ourselves for example yes okay honor ada let me tell you there is so now when you when you start to look at astrology astrology is time okay mm -hmm. when the clock ticks certain times there are things our bodies are constantly responding to our environment know that we are not alone Mm -hmm. We have the sun, we have the moon, we have the stars, we have vegetation, we have animals, we have the planets. Our bodies are connected to all that. And so as the planets move, our bodies are also moving. And our bodies are connected with, to these things outside of us. And so the moment you are able to activate, your body is not... This body, I know so many people will not believe it, but let me say it. It will make sense in future. Your body, when a hand is cut... You can reach a level of vibration where your hand is cut and you can grow it back. You can reach a level of vibration where mm -hmm. you can heal yourself. Yes. People, there are people who do. You reach a, our body can do magnificent things and it used to during the times of our ancestors. That is why I'm telling you black people are very strong and black people should know that they have a DNA that when they activate, yeah. they will be able to do things that nobody, that is impossible in this particular world. There are things that are impossible in this particular world, but the moment you activate the vessel, and the planets also help us, the planetary alignments also help us to, to activate. Yes. These are things we are moving together, and we are getting to places, to vibrations, where when we vibrate at a certain level, as a collective, this is what is called living in heaven. Mm. is capable of doing things that are supernatural, mm. that are and that is the goal. Those are the places where we are headed. Parts of ourselves that can even swim. Parts of ourselves. There are so many. The body can do so much. And this is why I'm starting to teach my own audience the prayers of worshipping the vessels. Because these are some of the ways you can activate your own vessel. And we will get there. It might not make sense right now, but it will make sense in, when we get there. You know, there are certain mm -hmm. things that don't make sense mm -hmm. right now because we've lived in a time where people have been in slavery so much that certain things have been forgotten so much that people don't even believe they're possible. But they are possible. They are very possible. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Can you expand on the concept of heaven on earth or hell on earth? Heaven and hell are just frequency levels. Mm. Vibration levels. You are heaven is inside your body, the way you live with your mind. There are people who they are very poor, but they are very okay. They don't have much money, but they are very okay because the, the relationship between them and their minds is heavenly. They don't worry. They are satisfied with where they are. They, they are seeing flowers everywhere. They see beauty in the world. And then there are people who they have everything in the world, but they are not happy. Mm. They are disturbed. They cannot sleep in peace. Now that is what is hell. Hell is when your mind is bullying you. When your mind is bullying you, when your mind has the capability of putting you down, when your mind has the capability of destroying you, when your own mind has the capability of talking negative to you, you are living in hell. But when your mind becomes your friend, when your mind becomes somebody you are talking to, somebody you are living in alignment with, when your nervous system is called the kundalini, when your kundalini becomes calm, when your nervous system becomes calm so much that nothing bothers you, even when a bomb is to blow up somewhere, it will not affect you. You mm. are very steadfast in yourself. Mm -hmm. That is heaven. Heaven and earth are concurrent here and there are people who are currently living in heaven and there are people who are currently living in hell. And it is all here. If your mind is bullying you, if your mind is not kind towards you, mm -hmm. you live that's how you know you're living in hell. Yep. But if your mind is kind 
and your mind is loving and your mind is amazing towards you you are living in heaven automatically it doesn't matter where you are so heaven and hell are things you cannot see people who live in hell they know by themselves and people who live in heaven they know by themselves you cannot see it it is something that is hidden in the psyche mm -hmm. and people deal with it as individuals mm -hmm. it is not group work heaven and hell is not group work it is individual mm -hmm. the way you live with yourself are you bothered the way you live with yourself are you at peace the way you live with yourself is your nervous system calm can you stay calm can you stay grounded no matter what that is what heaven is hell is when you're moving everything is resistant in your head you have all money in the world you have everything you need but you cannot transcend your mind that is hell mm. that is you living in hell because you will not have peace there's no peace in hell it mm. is fire constant fire the burning of the brain the brain is burning you mm -hmm. all the time you cannot transcend it you are not at peace you have shadows everywhere that is heaven that is what hell is yes Mm. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Mm. as I, I, well i don't know if everybody knows that but everything is energy right so this everything is energy my dear this conception of god in evil one time i said that we have god in us and we have evil in us a everybody think that oh no us humans we can only do we can good thing we only be positive i tell them me for example i consider myself a positive person that's how I see myself. But I know that I can destroy as well. I know I can do bad things as well. Why? Because God is in me and evil is in me. The question is, which energy are you going to spread to others? And which energy are you going to consume? Oh, no. I can only do bad things. No, 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 no. The same way you can destroy somebody is the same way you can build somebody. We all have that energy within us. You can be positive and you can be negative. And God is an evil as winning you. You are Satan and you are Jesus. You are. Don't pretend, oh no, only my good side. Well, guess what? Your bad side is still with you regardless of where you go. So can you span on that concept on God and evil being in us? Yes. Now, I don't call it God or evil. Mm -hmm. I call it totems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Personally, I never call anything good or bad. I call it totems. You see the same way a chameleon was given the power to camouflage to save its life. Mm. In the same way, a lion was given very strong jaws to crack a skull. And in the same way, a vulture was given very tough beaks to eat the dead. And it's the same way, a porcupine was given thorns to attack its enemy. And it's the same way, a tortoise has a shell it can cover itself in. It's the same way human beings are. Every human being has a totem. Every human being has a danger to them. Mm. Every human being was given something to protect themselves with. Just the same way animals are. Is there animal in the jungle that doesn't have something to protect themselves? Even snakes, they have poison. Because when you try to mess with it, it will inject you with the poison. I call these things totems. Now look at the animals in the jungle. A snake cannot just bite you unless you rattle it. A leopard will only attack you when you rattle it. And human beings, this is how it is. Trust me, in Africa, like from where I come from, people still lived among animals by the time I was young. And so these animals, they usually, our, my grandmother used to tell us that when you meet a snake, just let it go its way. It does not want to do anything to you. Just let it go its way. But when you rattle it, that is when you introduce a war. Mm. Human beings are the same. Mm. Human beings have things in them that they can destroy you with. And this is what they were given by God. Yes. It's the same way animals have things they can destroy you with. It's the same way human beings have things they can destroy you with. Now it depends on how you interact with somebody. Yes. It depends on how people interact with you. Because when you, when you step on a leopard's Nini tail, then expect. Expect what is going to happen. But the moment yep. you see a leopard passing by and you allow them a chance to exist and you, you also exist on your own, you will not collide. The sky 
is big enough to accommodate all clouds, just as the planet is big enough to accommodate everybody with all their totems. And I call these things that they call evil totems. And everybody has. And this is the reason why I always encourage Africans, know you are totem. Know what protects you. Know the things that you were given by your ancestors or God that protects you. Because these are the things they call evil and they call them evil. People who call them evil are people who don't want you to use them. They want you to be a lion that doesn't bite. Even mm. if they step on you. Mm. They want you to be a snake that doesn't hit even when they step on you. They want you to be a porcupine that doesn't throw thorns even when they beat you up. And that was the rule of slavery. They wanted slaves who are submissive. You don't do anything. When you're hit, you take it, okay? When you're hit, you take it. But that is not the natural way. The natural way is the way of the jungle. If you want to be my friend, you have to acknowledge that I have a totem. You have to acknowledge that I can destroy. And I have to acknowledge that you can destroy. Mm. But then we agree amicably with respect to exist as we are so that we don't rattle each other. We can be friends even though we have our totems so that we don't rattle each other and make each other use our totems. Because we, all, we must always know the totems are there. We must always know protection is always there. Everybody has a sword to protect themselves that themselves. And anybody that takes offense when you protect yourself when rattle, they know that that is a master that wants to make you a slave. It's only masters that don't want their slaves to use their totems. Mm, 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 mm. That is what it is. Mm. Totems are there. People are dangerous and we live in a dangerous world. It is a man eat man society. Yep. And you've seen men eating men. We can't pretend it doesn't happen. It happens. We've seen men who eat men. We've seen men attack men. It is a possibility. But then choice, the choice comes in. Because empathy comes before narcissism. Empathy comes before before you decide to hurt somebody. There's always empathy. You know, can I be empathetic? Especially somebody who did not do anything to you. There's always that thought that you can just be a kind person to this person. They did not do anything to you. But people decide to go beyond. People decide to cross the boundaries mm. and become evil to other people. And the moment you come, you become evil to another person, expect retaliation. People will retaliate. People will always retaliate. And so that is what brings violence. Most of the time, Mimi, I advise people, let people exist. Like, as long as their existence is not causing you harm, as long as their existence is for the good of all and with harm to none, let, we let people exist. We let mm. people exist with, because everybody's just trying to figure themselves out. Mm. Trust me, at the bottom of life, when you go to the bottom of life, you realize everyone is just trying to figure themselves out. Mm -hmm. Even people like Akina Elon Musk, when you hear them talk about these things they want to dish out, like right now they want to dish out robots, you know, they are just trying to figure themselves out with these things that they are doing. And they are hoping that the result will be better. But then, as, as the collective, we, we also must scrutinize such kind of people. Everybody is just trying to figure themselves out. Mm. And at the bottom of figuring themselves out, people are trying to make a living. People are trying to fulfill their desires. And some people's desires, depending on the ancestry they come from, some people's desires are harmful to the planet, while some people's desires are beneficial to the planet. Yes. And it is upon us as individuals to go within ourselves to judge that for ourselves within us without, you know, so much outside noise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there is one thing that i think is holding people back at least it did hold me back in the past me being honest which is yeah. mistakes and failures how do you approach mistakes yes. failures and in your life if you have ever failed or made a mistake how did you approach yeah. that or how do you see it what is your perception around that oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, reason, the reason is because it always gives, like when I fail, I always learn. Like I look forward to learning part than the failing part. Like most of the time, like let's say, for example, I, I was a part of a competition.
competition and then I did not emerge, you know, what I wanted or I did not win the prize or something. Yep. I always, I'm always so quick to look up the lesson. The lesson. Yes. There you go. I will laugh at myself first. So I think even in my country, even in my country, Kenya, I've been a laughing stock so many times, you know, because I've been found in situations where people were looking at me from their own perspectives and that made them laugh at me. But me personally, me personally, when I look at myself and this times I make mistakes, I always run to the lesson because it always leaves me a, as a better person. It always leaves me a better person. In fact, I get stressed when I win. Because when I win, now the next chapter is always like, it's always, let, me, let me give you an example. Like, for example, when you're doing a test and then you get 80%. Do you know when improving from 80% is difficult than when you get 12%? When you get 12%, you have a higher margin of improving. Like next time yeah. you might get 20. Mm -hmm. And then next time you might get 50. But then when you score 90%, mm -hmm. then you've already created a standard. And and most of the time, su surpassing 90% is more difficult than surpassing 12%. So most of the time, I look at failure as as a lesson and a, 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 as, a, as a chance to improve. Like literally, that's how I look at it. I, look at, I, I never look at the negative side that, oh my God, now I've I don't need a. Because I also know that as long as I'm not dead, I'm always. I, there's always a chance for me to improve. And Absolute. To improve yes. No condition is permanent. No condition is permanent. When, at least for me, when I fail or make a mistake, I'm like great because now I can take another path. I can change my perspective. I can change my attitude. Yes. I can change what I did previously. Yes. Because yes. once I fail, as you said, there is something I can learn. I'm not going to be ashamed of my mistake. I'm not, oh, they're going to make fun of me. They make fun of me, but guess what? I have the lesson. They can laugh, but I'm learning. They can laugh, but I'm improving. A lot of people, in my opinion, they, oh no, I don't want to fail. I don't want to make a mistake. Guys, allow yourself to fail. You are a human being, not a robot. Allow yourself to fail. It's great. It's okay. Learn from it and move on. Don't dwell on your mistakes. Learn from them. They dare to teach parts. And if I proceed, then it's me standing up with those parts. So shame, imagine, shame is a level that you must pass through for you to get to excellence. For example, I am a fashion designer. There are times, Mimi, I have ashamed myself. I have reached points where I was delivering to clients clothes that, you know, were embarrassing to me. You understand? I've ashamed myself. And that is how I learn. For you to come from an expert, from, from a, a, an amateur to an expert, you must pass through shame. Shame is the bridge mm. between inexperience and experience or you not knowing and you knowing. Mm. Shame is that bridge. You must be willing to go through shame. You must be willing to not know. You must be willing to suck. It's like a child learning yes. to walk. They will fall. They will fall. The shame must be there. Shame is something that all human beings must experience. Any human being that wants to become excellent must experience shame. No human, nobody is born perfect knowing. Because at the end of the day, however much you're supposed to become a very renowned fashion designer, you must pass through the points where you suck, where your work is not good. And you will see it by yourself. You will see it by yourself and it will embarrass you. But now you keep going. You keep going. Because now shame comes. Shame is that signal that comes between you and your higher self. If you want to tap into your higher self, you must be willing to go through the bridge called shame. That is, it, it must be there. It is there for everybody. <laughs> mm. it, it, is, it is, unfortunately, all successful people have experienced shame. And so if you want to become a successful individual, Welcome you it. must be willing yes. to be ashamed. And the ancestors are strong. The ancestors are strong. The body. So this, you didn't plan it, you didn't, oh my God. 
The ancestors are strong. The ancestors are strong. This is the magic I'm talking about. I literally say I'm tired of living in a world that is orchestrated by men. I want to get to a point where the only orchestrators are the universe. The only orchestrators are the ancestors. I'm tired of dealing with things planned by men. I want to deal with things that are the planned by the universe. And this is one of those. This is one of those. I swear. A hundred percent. I want magic only. Magic only. Magic only. Magic only. <laughs> I have no words. I'm so thankful. I'm so it is a privilege to talk to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing your energy, your time with me. I'm thankful forever. Today, tomorrow, even yesterday, I was thankful. It's this is a dream come true to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm glad to as well. I'm glad. I'm glad I I I, I pressed. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm, and I'm thankful as well. I'm thankful as well. Even when you follow me I'm on thankful. on TikTok that day, I went to dance like crazy. Like no. <laughs> I was like, no, no, this is, I'm like, let me double check. Maybe TikTok is messing up with me. Twice and thrice and four times. Oh my God. I could follow you and please keep doing what you do, exactly how you do it. And keep doing exact. I love you the way you are. I love you just the way you are. I want nothing other than you can add the ones that you want, but I love you the way you are. The way you exist is perfect for me. It's the way you are mm. exactly is perfect for me. And we are going, the future is ours. That's what I'll keep on saying. The future is ours. Is and to anybody here that had me for the first time, I received a lot of gifts. I was like, they gifted me for what? Me, I'm crazy. <laughs> I don't even know why you are gifting me for, but hey, thank you. Thank you to your people. This, this is the garden of Eden. And we, we are in heaven. Heaven on earth. Everybody was just with positive energy. See, this is how we're supposed to feel talking to your tribe. Positive energy. Exactly. Everybody was laughing, enjoying, sending gifts. And it's been more than more than one hour. And we didn't stop. But people still enjoy, still yeah. entertain. Because this is life, guys. This is what love supposed to look like. This is what education exactly. supposed to look like. Yes. This is what yes. empowerment is supposed to look like. Each exactly. one teach one. Exactly. Yes. Oh. And may the universe pave way for us to uh, meet each other more. Soon. The universe is in charge. Soon. The universe is in charge. Soon. Soon. Universe, I know you are listening to me. Ancestors, you already know what to do. I know you are listening to me. I'm a hey, born ready, prepared. And if I'm not ready that day, I'm a hey, prepared. I was born like this. I was born to meet you. I was born to be with you. I was born to celebrate with you. I was born to cherish you. I was born to appreciate you. I was born to honor you. They can prevent it. It is. And the, and those that are here, don't be scared. I don't know. Fear is for a lot of people. Don't be scared. If you have a goal, you have a dream, start acting, feeling, believe that is happening. Act, believe, behave as a successful person. The person you want to become in 20 years. You don't have to wait. Behave as that person today. Act like that person today. Feel like that person today. If your imagination can go there, you there. can be there. Be. And we will be here to constantly remind you. And we will be here to constantly help you. And we will be here to constantly walk together with you and know that the challenges you're facing, mm. you're facing them as well. Mm. Be together. On the challenges you're facing, we are facing them as well. Together, we will solve our mathematical equation. Together we will move. Together we will succeed. Together 
Ubuntu, no, no. I am because we are. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, let me, let, let's go. Let's, let's go. go, yeah. You yeah, keep... I think this is it. I'm not even continuing with this live. Like, I, I think this is it. This was amazing today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this particular... I did. We will do more. The universe will plan. The universe organized this. And it shall organize as we go until the end of time. And for the record... To, and to anyone that feel like they missed out or they want to rewatch the information... I'm going to post this whole uh, video on my YouTube channel. I recorded it all because I know this might not resonate with you today, but in 10 years, in 20 years, maybe our kids are going to watch that video. It's going to be on YouTube. If you miss anything, rewatch it, replay, post, take notes, take whatever resonates with you and leave what does not resonate with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. And and everybody who has gifted us, we appreciate wow. you. And That's the most gift I have received in the life. Thank and you. We appreciate. We appreciate thank everybody. Yeah. I send it back to you 10 times, to all of you. <laughs> and Ada, Ada, do you know Kiswahili? <laughs> no, but I can learn. You teach me. Hey. Oh no, oh my god. <laughs> and I recognize the divine in you. <laughs> I love you so much. I A part you. of me is crying right now. But it's not tears of, of oh. it's tears of happiness. Do you know what it is that oh. you somebody inspired you, motivate you, give you education, and you can make that person? Do you all know how that feels? Oh. <laughs> oh god we are all connected so much I, I love it I love it I love it I love it thank you I love the divine in you I love it thank and you. I love you all as well so let me let me end the live thank okay. you guys so much for the gift see you again next time see you bye take care everyone yeah. stay great stay black yeah stay black that black exactly black, black don't crack Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god let me end wow guys to anybody who's gonna watch this video believe believe that your dreams your goals anything you want you can have it you just gotta believe it feel it know it we watch this video multiple times. We watch, we watch, we learn, we learn, we learn. You are powerful. I have this here. Who do I want to meet? And the date is March 28, 2023. Today is June 4, 2023. I don't know when I'm going to post this video, whenever I post it. The first person in my list is Suiri. This goddess, this queen right here. I wanted to marry her and I'm going to continue meeting her because she has been a source of light, a source of energy, a source of inspiration, source of motivation for me. I dream about meeting her, about talking to her. I even told my friends that, hey, I want one day to be talk to her. But I, I she had in, in her uh, Instagram that she charged, I don't know, I think, I don't know how many dollars. For an interview or to talk to her, I was like, well, I had a lot of money. I don't have that money yet, but I know I'm going to meet her. And today, for free, I didn't pay for nothing. I got this chance. I got this privilege. What? Everything is possible. I know, but today was a reconfirmation that all the things you can dream of, all the things your imagination can see, you can do. But... Don't just wish for things to happen and go sit down. Work. Be consistent. Be disciplined. Love yourself. Support yourself. Spread your uniqueness to the world. Spread who you truly are to the world. No matter what anybody can say, stay true to you. I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. And people that give me in their life, 
That's the most I have been gifted in a TikTok life. They didn't even know me. But they still give me energy. Because energy is life. You are energy. I am energy. You are God. I am God. Praise the God in you before praising the God outside of you. I praise the God in me before believing or praising the God outside of me. You are powerful. Now I'm going to check this. And I'm going to put the date that when it happened. 4th of, Ju of, of, of June. <laughs>